podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's well, going on? Not nothing, you know, my dad. Well, go on. Why don't y'all stop what you're doing right now? Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. I mean, threads. Just type in Boss Talk Podcast 101 and you can find us everywhere. Streaming podcast is available. And But if you want to see our visuals, because a lot of people don't do visuals, but we, should, we, we let y'all in on that. Go to our YouTube channel. Sign up for our membership. How you can find our membership, easy on your phone. Look, there's a link under every video and it'll say join us, subscribe, join our membership, click on it. It takes you straight to our membership. We thank you for all the support and we love you. Man, hey man, listen man, we got a special guest in there today. He don't need no introduction, man. He frequents the show, man. Uh, I think it's he's a Leo in the building. Yeah, yo, man, that PMC is man. He's shining. You blinging, man. What you talking about, man? I just like the the the, the merch, man. The merch is going down, man. Oh, you like the mask? Yeah, the mask and the, just the whole and and then the the supplementation uh, mm -hmm. hoodie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the mask on for a reason, though. Uh, why is why do you got a mask on? Young he's it bust me in my shit. What? Yeah, he was listening to an old record that I had, and I called his mama a bitch. And uh, he said, who you was talking about? I say, my other baby mama. He used to say, you're a damn lie. Them kids wasn't even born. Bop, nigga, bust me in my shit. Damn, man. Come on, man. Lil' Pimp. <laughs> Lil' Corey. Nah, Young Heezy. Young Heezy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, damn, the kids jumping on the daddies now? Yeah, man, that's how How he, old is he? He about 25. Still old to be doing all that now. That's how these demons is these days. But you see, when they're that old, you can't really do nothing. Except from pop them in the mouth like Jesus. Yeah, you can fight back. <laughs> but what 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 is that gonna accomplish though? Well, these days you got to assert your dominance. You know, these niggas like little monkeys and we the silverbacks. So we gotta let them know all that silver in our beard. That's what being a silverback motherfucking gorilla. You know what I'm talking about? So you think he he got a point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He learned his lesson? Nah, I didn't I didn't do nothing. I just took that lick. <laughs> So, I know you haven't been on here in a while. So, what have you been up to recently? Because I know you've been up to a lot. Because when we look on your social media, you always talking a whole bunch of stuff. I've been about on everything. the line trying to see what it's hitting folk. Nah, uh, I've been on the ground like usual. Uh, you know, this and that, everything that I touch. Uh, you know, all the stuff I put my hands on. Always oh, so many different businesses. Any new businesses that popped up since then? Man, to be honest, I, I was about to launch one, but it had to do with the whole weight loss thing. Mm. So I got up to a lossage of about 62 pounds, and I okay. was shooting for 100. What were you doing? What you doing? I had been uh, juicing, blending uh, fruits, a bunch of exercise. Oh, you've been doing that. So no meals. you just been straight juicing? Uh, well, back then it was minimal meals. Uh, but after I went and tried Trio Burger, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, when Corey got out of prison, it kind of threw me off, and I've been fighting. To get back. Yeah, yeah. I picked up a little something back, but but not a bunch. But yeah, because you look smaller than you did the last time when we interviewed Still? you. Still? Yeah. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Let's shout out uh, the Texas Rangers, man, for making it to the World Series. Wow. Let's, let's just go and shout them out right for now. We're wearing this for a reason, man. Let's go and get it popping right now. Who Guys, the hell is that? The Rangers? Yeah. The baseball team. Oh, you watch that? Stop playing, man. I'm, I'm I'm in Dallas, man. I got to do what I got to do, man. Motherfucking sport. <laughs> you a creator. You always traveling, man. I ain't watching <laughs> But so, you got to know what's going on. On um, what? In every platform. All I know is I'm black. <laughs> wow. Come man, on. I heard you the other day, man. Uh, I, I seen a clip, and mm -hmm. uh, you said something. It messed me up. You, you said something about... You wasn't with Pimp them first or not. You went in the on, 90s. And you said in the 90s, some niggas talk like they know everything about uh, uh, UGK or whatnot, but you was really saying, no, nah, I didn't meet them to like the ending part, but I knew of them. What was that all about? Well, I get a lot of, because uh, we make content, we get a lot of comments, inboxes, this and that, this and that. So I get all these 
UGK uh, historians that just know everything. And what I'm trying to tell them is me being from Port Arthur, Texas, which the population is about 50,000. Just because I seen these guys walking around, dap them up, smoke joints with them. That don't mean I know them. And it damn sure don't mean I know everything about their music endeavor. I've been knowing them boys since the 80s. But I'm never going to claim I know everything that was going on. That would be cockamamie. Yeah, that wouldn't even be the truth, huh? Right. Like, because you can't nobody know everything that was going on. Right. You have to have no life at all, have to be a no business born, pigeon toed, not needed motherfucker paying attention to niggas that damn close. Nigga, back in the 90s, I was smoking dip, going in and out of jail, boxing niggas, talking about damn near 150 fights up under my belt. When y'all gonna ask me about me, man? Damn, you acting like uh, uh, Goldmouth when I had him on here. He didn't want to talk about Jesus no more. He was done with talking about Jesus. He said he want to talk about himself and what he got going. <laughs> I just want to talk. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, I know you've seen uh, Super Tight. Shout out to Bobo. Uh, yeah. I seen Edgar, Edgar uh, interview where he talked about uh, Pimp C the night of the that he passed and it's the whole, you know, uh, the whole surrounding theory of what people feel happened, what he felt happened. Right, right. Um, what did you take from that? I got to ask you that. I would say that uh, Ed being a family member, you know, maybe he had been sitting with something too long and just wanted some therapy, you know what I mean? And he did what he did. Uh, some things I'm not talking about, you know. When the time is right, yeah, yeah, I might, I might do some, some talking, but some things is just, I didn't think it was the time for that. But that's his kin folks, so I'm not holding it against him. He's still family, you know, Bobo family. So if that's what they demonstrated, okay, that's what it is. But they got a little slack off of that from a bunch of people, and you know what I'm saying. However, they dealing with it, they dealing with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just know that that's something that's during the time that you was dealing with them. And you basically, as far as that night and that day and uh, the things early on, I heard some so many things. I wasn't there. But I have heard that was at the funeral, there was snipers on the roof. Yeah. I heard that. I yeah, don't yeah, know because yeah. I wasn't there. Uh, I heard that there, I mean, uh, of course, the funeral home called me. Uh, mm -hmm. They told me how the body was delivered and all kind of stuff. It's crazy. They told me he went to a, a white uh, funeral, funeral home, yeah, 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 and not a black one. And that was real odd to them. That's what right. they told me on the phone. Yeah, that's well, how much me and you talked about PMC on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. So a big part of that is me dealing with you because I met you before I met anybody else. Right, right. You know yeah. what I mean? I believe that uh, the black funeral home missed that motherfucking money. Now, uh, <laughs> it was a bunch of crazy shit going on prior. Uh, we had just left Dallas. Crazy big show. Go back to the high rise, cutting records, having good family time. And he was just on some shit about what he was about to do because he had to read everybody. He was one of them dudes, he'll sit back and watch it or analyze to see, do I need this nigga around me or do I need to get this nigga the fuck away from me? And so he had analyzed everybody and he felt like, man, this this core little group I got right here, from the the artist to the to uh, his personal assistance to just all the people, the security, everybody. He felt like he had something really strong and he appreciated it. And so he told us what he was about to do. So a lot of us felt like a weight was taken off our shoulders. Our brother finna go to Cali, kick this field goal, come back and bless everybody game. And we can really mash on this shit, budget it this time. Because everything we had been doing was off the cuff. Uh, UGK posse niggas, all them niggas was styles and ass. You know what I mean? But it is something I'm going to let you in on. Uh, make sure you remind me. So everybody was thousand ass shaking and baking on their own. But Big Bro was like, UGK Records about to be funded. We're going to get this dist distribution. So when I come back, we're going to drop this project. UGK Posse got the big, big nuts, all that type of shit. And we had started recording probably like six, seven joints. You know what I mean? Two of them wind up going on uh, Naked Soul. And one went on uh, Steel Pimpin'. I think that was released by Rap A Lot. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, I, I could say it, it was just a, a trying time when you look back at, at that, that history, that, that whole thing, how it unfolded. You know, um, I know you, how's, how's uh, uh, Corey doing since he came home? I know you've been, been talking with him and everything. Um, it, it's, it's one of those deals where he's coming of age, so his awareness is different. 
You okay. see, when he was a kid, you got all these elements coming at him. All these people claiming to be friends, family, this and that, this and that. And he can't differentiate that because he's a kid. But 18, 19, 20, then he goes spend two years in prison. You know a nigga going to wake up if he goes some grown man environment like that. So right now he got questions. And uh, he just, you know what I'm saying, want to know certain stuff. And I'm just trying to be as instrumental as I can to... Hey, this is what I know about this, you know, from from music to, to life, just just anything. So somebody was like, are you the manager? No, nah, I'm not a manager. I'm on some conductor type shit. I'm damn near touching on every aspect of life because these are young men and they need direction. And unfortunately, his father is gone. And so niggas be screaming all that. We got love for Pim C. Man, we repping for Pim. How in the fuck is you repping with your motherfucking hands on your pocket, in your pocket, tightening up your wallet, making sure nothing come out? Nigga, you ain't doing nothing but talking. Wow. And, and like, that's something. You, you think about it. You hear all the Pim C stories. If you put it in, of course, mine going to pop up. I'm going to pop up Pim C, Pim C, Pim C, Pim C. I've actually, I did call Corey. I reached out to him. I know mm -hmm. we supposed to be linking up. And I ain't tripping on that. And I could talk, and I reached out to him before that as well, even when he was locked up. Right. But at the end of the day, when you look at, like, like all of these different people that speak on the pimp name, I asked Bun the same thing when I was talking to him, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, how, you know, what is what is what is the results of what one would want to see with the legacy of Pimp C? Really, is pretty much what I be getting at. Like, because if nobody speaks on Pimp C, good, bad, or nothing, then he'll be he'll fade out. To be honest with you, yeah, and that would be a disservice. You see what to I'm Texas saying? Because think you're talking about, about that. a iconic legend. They keep Tupac and Biggie in the conversation. Correct. And we're going to damn sure keep Chad Butler in, in the, the conversation. conversation. That's what I be thinking about. But it's also going to come with some residual. You know what I mean? Yeah. It ain't just going to be funky breath niggas talking about the pimp. It's going to be some things put together, some paper flips so them youngsters could put something in their pocket and move on along because they, they really young and they got a chance to do anything they want to do in this world. Rather, it's music, act, social media, uh, own any kind of business. They can do whatever they want. This world is wide open. And when you have people who so say they love you, have all these resources, bitch ass niggas drop out. Wow. And you know, and like I said, when I. When Corey Mo. <laughs> oh, Corey Mo. Oh, you name dropping today. What you mean? I always do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, come on. That, that what I'm saying. Like, like when you when you look at like like these guys, man. Even when, like I said, when I say Bun and me, we talked, and I was trying to figure out like, okay, where do we want to be? If you don't talk about pimp, really, think about this. You know, and I didn't say this to Bun, but I, I'll say this to you. If you don't talk about him. They got these things now that's real popular. What they're doing is they make a, a, a like a, 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 my brother was just talking about it. They'll do a documentary, a docu-series, and, and they, they'll just put his picture up and they'll tell the story the way they want to tell right. the story. Right. I'm being real. This is happening all over YouTube I right see, now. I see it on YouTube. It's everywhere. Time. And like, if you don't talk, people like you, people like Bum, people like Bobo, people like Edgar, people like, if you don't talk about Pimp C, then you just gonna get lost in the sauce and then somebody else is gonna tell the story. Right. I think some people that's that's close to the fam, they almost think it's a fine line that they, they're overdoing it and they don't wanna seem like they're trying to benefit off his name. But I'm transparent. Like, I'm not a hoe ass nigga pulling slick moves. Everything I do is right there in your motherfucking face. We broke bread on t shirts right after he passed, me and Mama West. She told me to stop the Pimp C Forever t shirts and I did. When Corey came of age, we restarted him. You know what I mean? That's why the trio has to have Pimp on the side. I cut him in so he can put some bread in his pocket before he went and while he was in and while he out. And we in touch every day. You know what Wait I mean? Wait a minute. So you saying you before he went in, you put the, the Pimp on side of the hat so that well, we, Corey we could benefit the, from uh, it? Yeah, we started the, the Pimp C Forever shirts back before he went in. And then when he went in... I've been selling these hats for years. Of course. Been selling Trio gear for 23 years. So when he went in, I put Pimp on the side of the hat to get him a slice of the pie. That's I, cut, I cut him in. 
And, and and that's what people don't understand. And I tell the story all the time, and I, I'll never stop telling it. When I first met you, it was in this parking lot. It was down a little bit. And I was walking, and I seen you. And I was like, man, you know, you had some shirts then. You had mm-hmm. some stuff then. You, I got a CD from you. It was CD time back right. then. Love and, it, man. <laughs> Miss it. <laughs> Crying and on the inside. But the thing, we talked about the Pimp C shirt, and you was like, man, that it goes to, you know, the, yeah. the, the family. And I think that's what people don't understand. And me and you did that. I was right after Pimp had died, really. Right. You were still in the streets doing your thing. Right, and a lot of people, because they don't know, they want to associate me with everybody else doing something. But the fact is, when you look a little close, you'll see it's directly connected. Me and Mama was together damn near every day until I just had to move around and, and wave that flag because we couldn't do it from PA going to these invites. We had a lot of favor from the, the bigger artists and whatnot, but it was more or less like, come hang out with us. And I was telling Mama Straight Business, for the label, we're going to have to solidify something. You know what I mean? Wow. You, you, so let's talk about that for a second. You met, you you was with uh, uh, Pimp C uh, mother, Mama West, mm-hmm. when she, you know, when he passed, you was with her. Mm-hmm. Um, just give me some of those times, man, the difficult times that when you, when you, because to lose a son is crazy, but to lose a son, Pimp C for sure, is throwed. Uh, like, just like, what were some of the things that you noticed in her, you know, months out after that, that kind of you know, concerned you? I'm going to take you before he got out all the way up short. So before he got out, you could tell a lot of fight was taken out of her. But she still had this hope, you know what I mean? And so it was a bunch of false calls about him coming home. But then it finally was like, he's coming home. When he came, she was complete. It was a different glow about the house. Her, 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 her confidence, just everything. She was complete. And they they was like, man, they were buddy, buddy. Like, that's our only child, you know what I mean? And the, and the relationship was crazy. So to have him for that short period of time, it was like she got robbed and somebody stole a life out of her. So the, the transition from uh, before he came home to when he came home to now he gone, like she really just floating, trying to figure it out, you know what I mean? And she got questions because she felt like, he didn't just pass away on no permethazine type shit. And remind me to tell you about the permethazine story when we left Dallas and, you know what I'm saying, went back to the high rise. So she felt like she was robbed of her child just that quick. And wow. after that, we were going to um, Ozone Awards 08. So he passed 07. We at the Ozone Awards 08 doing a tribute uh, that Bun put together. Uh, but, you know, you'll see it on YouTube and whatnot. And shout out to Julie Berry for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be the UGK posse doing the uh, tribute song for Pimp, but somebody voted that out. But somehow uh, MJG from A-Ball and MJG, he missed his flight. So Bun hit me like, say, you want to do this? Hit boom, you remember this song? I'm like, hell yeah, boom, boom, boom. So I got actually got on there and performed too. But we was upstairs, and they also gave us these merch tables. We was upstairs moving the Pimp C Forever shirts, and we kept the same design so people wouldn't get it confused. And while we up there talking to Wendy Day next to either 97.9 or whomever that was, Mama got a phone call. When she got up, she walked away, and she just screamed and almost dropped on the floor. Here it is again. Her mama just passed away. Wow. So it was back to back. So her mama passed away, yeah. right? Back right. to back. How fa- how far had it been? Like a, that wasn't far. No, nah, because Pimp passed in December 07. Uh, her mother passed sometime in uh, 08. Wow. Whenever the Ozone Awards Yeah, was. just right afterwards. So we go to that funeral. You know what I mean? And uh, we, we hold her up, Bun, Red Boy, uh, a few other folks, you know what I'm saying, from the team. We travel to Louisiana. I believe it was Crowley, Louisiana. We go out there and we hold the family up, you know what I mean? Come back, everything, trying to get back together. Then my brother died. You know what I mean? Wow, the shit was crazy, man. It, it was crazy. Wow, and 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 just took everything in you to try to focus and keep going and pushing through, huh? I had just had a new baby. You know, had what to man? do, had to keep it moving. And, and and I seen all the motion that we had created, and it was like I didn't even give myself time to mourn. I just kept grinding. Mm. And bitch ass niggas was steady throwing darts at me. You know what I mean? Trying to break a nigga down, but. That was one of the worst times in my life and shit. So if I made it through that shit, then I lost my mother, you know what I'm saying, a few years after that, right after Mama West. Man. So 
I made it through all that shit, shit. Nigga, I'm ready, nigga. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm talking about? It's, still, it's instilled in him. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so, give me... Um, you was you was on that stage a few times. I know uh, Toe Down just left here talking about Pimp C on the stage and how erratic it got. You know some of the times when you know some of the things that stuck out to him that happened. Like what was what was some key element moments that you seen Pimp on the stage and you you basically like, dang, did that just happen? Trio stories. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Shout out to OG Percy, <laughs> OG man. OG Percy, yeah. <laughs> Say man, this shit fresh on my mind because somebody was just fucking with me about this up. We in Dallas at some kind of convention center or whatever. Okay. And so we walk on the stage and Pimp doing his thing, shit chaotic. A nigga throw a diamond ring on the stage, you know what I mean? I pick that bitch up, you know what I mean? At the, at the end of the show, I check with Pimp, say, man, it's your ring? Like, nah, nigga, shit ain't mine. Whoop, put that bitch in my pocket. But while we on stage, one of the sound people on the stage hand me a microphone and shit. So I don't know if him and Pimp had a, a pre-conversation, so I'm thinking, oh, Pimp must want me to do some ad-libs. So I'm on that bitch. I'm hitting some Pimp C-U-G-K ad-libs, but that shit got the feeling good to him. I start hitting them, he's a Leo ad-lib. <laughs> K-O, you know what I'm talking about? Huh? And, and I did that shit, and I seen Pimp jump. Then he start trying to look where that motherfucking microphone was, and that nigga spotted it. I had that bitch getting it in. You know what I'm talking about? Damn, I'm talking about fucking this show up. That nigga walked over there smooth as a bitch, <laughs> looked at me, did like this and say, give me that motherfucking yeah. mic. <laughs> and I hand it to him and shit, man. That nigga walked off. That nigga say, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so he had to get you. You got out of control. Yeah, nigga say, man, how you felt when Pimp did that? I say, like a little child <laughs> embarrassed in the bitch. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that, that's, those are teachable moments, man. Yeah, the, the video lives forever. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 man. That's the cold part about it, man. So when you think about like what's going on today for us in the music, how do you feel about the way the music is transitioning today? Back then it was CDs, of course. Back then it was a lot of different uh, avenues, tangible avenues. Now you definitely got to use your merch and stuff. But just the music, man, being that the you know the streams don't equate to much. You heard Snoop talk about that one day. Mm -hmm. You know about how you're not making that kind of impact the way you used to with the money. Even so much so, even with the visuals, because of like the internet and stuff, the the, the writer strike and all that. This stuff is causing a, a rift because of the. Way the monetary things are being diminished to be honest with you right what do you think about it how do you deal with it like did you know the history of it you've seen the transitioning of it what do you think i think that um prince was trying to tell us that this age was coming and i remember he did this big box set of his music and he sold it for like a hundred and some dollars and i paid close attention to what he was doing kept trying to warn us michael jackson kept trying to warn us but for the, the hustlers in this music shit from the urban community, rap, the unity and the togetherness to, to you know, you bring potatoes, I bring cheese, and we make old gratin. We're not doing that. We're trying to get a little information over here, over there, and we ain't combining the shit. So now we're getting boxed out because all these millions of streams, you ain't getting shit for them hoes. Yeah. So when the dinosaurs such as myself and a lot of the other guys out of Ace Town that was popping trunks, selling CDs and whatnot, when people started telling you, I ain't got a CD player in my car no more, boom, a light bulb should have came on. I never tripped because I always sold clothing too. You know what I mean? So coming together with the merchandise, it changed from guerrilla marketing to pop-up shops. And we saw more of the, and I don't mean no disinfect, but we saw more of the, 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 the hipsters, uh, the nerd type kids, the skateboarders doing the pop up shops, the street niggas, the guerrilla marketers. We was in the parking lots and in the hoods and shit. If you didn't convert fast enough, you got left behind. I just kept converting. And then in 2015, when the conversion would just kind of locked me out, I created something else to come back and open this bitch back up and put myself back in, which I did. So I feel to sum it up. The resources and the options that's out there when you learn something and you really fuck with a nigga, you need to pull that nigga in and sit down with that nigga and see what he got to bring to the table, too. These niggas is thinking we're going to live forever 
So they trying to keep their little shit all covered up. Oh, I don't know shit about shit. You know what I mean? You bitch ass nigga going walk into Spotify, walk into YouTube. Them white folk telling your bitch ass something. And you need to bring that goddamn conversation back to the ant mile, motherfucker. <laughs> man, that's real. Come on, tough, man. man. I, I just want to see the music, you know, go forever and last forever, man. I don't want to see them water down the films either. Like, I want to see it get everybody get the respect they deserve for their artistry. You know what I'm saying? Gotta I think get creative. That you got to get creative. You got to figure out ways to make make it make sense to where a person can feel good. I believe we got to get back to hand to hand, but I don't know how we do it, but I would love to see it. Those, um, I don't think it's going to ever happen. The merch for it's sure. Now. Yeah. The hand to hand? Yeah. But it, you got to be strategic. Everything is online. It is. But when you're doing it all, you you capitalizing off online, you're getting back with a physical presence. And so that's what I'm teaching my son and young pimp right now. Them pop-up shops, you got to get them people face, take them pictures, hug them babies, sell them CDs. And, and, and you let them know this CD ain't never coming out again. This is just a, a limited run. You sell them hats and them T-shirts and you make so many connections that way. I think I think you said it in, my, in a nutshell. Um it's a lot of times, man, the internet, I see you getting to it, man. Like you always, you always trying to figure something out. What was the ninja thing about? The ninja thing has to do with the weight loss. Let's talk about it. You guys are my friends, so I'll tell you. The <laughs> blending ninja is actually a business in itself. It's a juicing and blending business. I was buying a damn step van, rapping blending ninja all on that hoe. I was gonna tell everybody in my second book how I lost a hundred pounds, and here's these goddamn juices and these recipes I've been blending. But I'm fighting like a motherfucker. <laughs> the Oreo cookies and triple chocolate cakes with ice cream color, man. It's, it's hard. Chilling, it's man. hard. It's hard. And but everybody it ain't around impossible. me hungry like a motherfucker, huh? It ain't impossible. You it's gonna not. do it? It's not because. I'm still jumping on the floor doing push-ups. I'm still sit-ups. I'm still treadmill. But it's just everybody I'm around act like they just dull on trying to be better. They just love the way the food tastes. And you I'm gotta a food convert addict. them. Well, you instead of them being a bad influence on you, you need to be that good influence on them. My impact ain't strong enough. You ever smoke cracks? No. Okay. No. So it's like everybody on crack. I'm trying to kick it, and I kicked it for a while, but I keep going in the same environment, and they still lighting up straight shooters, and I go to smelling that motherfucking work, and I want me some. Come on, man. That's man. all I'm saying. So, so when you look at how they portray that uh, pimp, you know, we're going to go back to him, that he was, you know, like like on the serve, and this is what, what how he passed. I'm going to go back to that. Mm -hmm. Like, do you agree with with that being a portion of some, because I I heard it was no test or nothing like that, no autopsy. Was it an autopsy or do you I, remember? I, I believe it was. It was okay. Yeah, I believe it. But was. But it didn't show no traces of nothing. Uh, I believe what they were looking for, they found small traces of it. Okay. And they wanted to attribute that to uh towards his death, but we just I don't believe that personally from the conversations with me and Mama. Um, I'm glad you brought that back up because this is the part I was going to tell you. When we were leaving Dallas that day, um, heading back to the high rise to cut those records and all that, me, him, and I, repeat was sitting in the um, hotel parking lot right in front of the hotel. And he, you know, he said a little drink whenever he felt like it, but he wasn't no frequent drink head, you know what I mean? So he was like, uh, P, man, uh, what nigga get some drink at, man? R.I.P. I repeat. Man, what nigga get some drink at? He like, man, I got a little a three and a half for a four right here. He said, let me see it. He like, here you go, man. And he took that bitch. He said, that is about a three and a half, huh? He popped that bitch and he gloop, 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 knocked that bitch down straight. Wow. Yeah. So the whole trip back from Dallas to Houston, he was in a van. He was knocked out in the van and shit. And so when we got back to the high rise, we get outside the car and everybody talking, congregating. They're like, what are we going to do? I'm like, shit, we ain't going to leave him in the damn van. Let's wake him up and help him upstairs. So... We woke him up, helped him upstairs. He was really groggy. His voice was like really gravelly. And so when we got him upstairs, he was like, man, we finna record and we finna do this and we finna do that. And I'm like, this nigga voice is out of there. We ain't finna do shit. Yeah. And I had this little slim reindeer looking little 
ready. Let me tell you about this bitch. Like, I had a little mama waiting on me, man. Couldn't wait till I get home. So I'm like, man, I'm fin I'm finna go to the crib. Y'all niggas ain't finna drop no records. This shit gonna sound like shit. And I shout out, you know what I mean? Got my cook go get my yeah. house a great school. Got to have it. Don't talk about so the next day them niggas call me like, man, you should have came back. I'm like, why? He said, man, we cut by three, four records. I'm like, how y'all cut three, four records? Man, that nigga voice was out right. of there. So they like, man, listen, and them niggas push play, and that nigga on hooks and shit, that nigga rapping. I say, man, I told, girl, get your goddamn hands off me. <laughs> Jump back in the lag and smash back and, and, and finish cutting the records. And what he did that made me feel so inclusive and so loved and so a part of this shit, man. I hate this shit over with, damn it, man. Yeah, but you always nigga glad, huh? Now, nah, nigga, we still fighting and kicking, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yo. So when I got back, man, he like, he's. Man, we left these verses open for you, man. Go and write your verses. Almost cried, my nigga. Are you serious, man? Cause I, and, and what, I'm going to tell you this that really messed with me. And here's the deal. When you said something the other day, when last time we was on here, me, you, Mr. Lee, and Bobo, remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And you was like, man, they took you off of some verses. Mm -hmm. Was that some of the verses that you exactly. were talking about? Exactly. So it meant so much to you. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. they took you off because they yeah. found bigger names, of course, to try to... Business. Yeah, but, but at the same time, intimate moments like that, business people don't give a fuck <laughs> about that. But that's something you tie to for the rest of your life. So I didn't ever feel like, ooh, I'm going to run to the public and try to get the arms of the angel hug on me to make me feel better. Fuck it. Business-wise, they took me off a damn near four. They left me on two. And I might have traces and remnants of the ones that I was on. So one day, I might just splash them bitches in your motherfucking ear, nigga. <laughs> Fuck Man. You, man. So... And, and that's the that, that's the game, you know. Some Bun said that sticks out to me is that he said once he's gone, that there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna start coming out because he said he feel like people right now are not gonna do it with him being still alive. Right. I would I would agree with that because he they he, they know the repercussions that'll come behind it. I would agree with that. That makes sense, huh? It happens with everybody. Wow. But the thing is. We're not going to even be here that long. So we got to love each other, man. We got to start hearting each other while we here, my nigga. I Look agree. how many people you done lost like that. Man, I just lost a homeboy the other day. A nigga told me I laugh too much and I clown too much. You goddamn right, nigga. I'm going to have fun with the rest of this motherfucking time I got on this earth. And I'm going to heart my people and I'm going to help as many as I can. Fuck you sour-hearted ass niggas. Wow. Man, so how tough is you finding this stuff in the comments, Heezy, or is this niggas telling you that? Cause I don't think too many niggas run up on you telling you a whole bunch. Man, niggas is man. These niggas is not that. And sometimes it ain't even niggas. It little old four foot eleven <laughs> white niggas. Little oh, old yeah. punk ass, uh, one troll ass motherfucker who ain't never did nothing but dick ride for transportation to and from anywhere he went. He still hating on a nigga eighteen years. Man. Really? Come on, man, bitch man, ass. Nigga. So. When you go back to Port Arthur, is there anything signifying like a mule or stuff or Pimp C? Uh, I think they did a new one. Okay. But when I'm in PA, I'm fucking with trill ass niggas that I really fuck with, you know, family members and shit like that. And I'm glad you asked that because that brings me to what I'm doing right now. I got this okay, okay, trill stories, original gangsters and hustlers. I'm taking the goddamn covers back and showing you why the word trill was even uttered. I'm showing you the niggas, the stories. I'm showing you all of the bottom, the slugs, the bugs, the worms, the niggas went did all that time. The bona fide street trill niggas that made that whole motherfucking city move the way it moved and made motherfuckers interested and wanting to hear them raps and that content. Wow. Did man and and when it, and when is this when is this gonna happen? We already shot the first episode, my nigga. P A Black. We gonna drop that bitch probably uh maybe Saturday uh hopefully. Then I got all kind of other niggas and these are people that Bun know also. This is very verifiable people. People who then we did 15, 20 years. People who didn't caught bodies in all kind of shit. Gang bangers. Niggas who didn't got shot six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Like. 
I'm not going trying to exploit their stories. I just always was trying to get in position to go back and find the niggas that came up like me and try to get them some options and resources because they were so fucking brave. So them being that damn brave doing some bullshit, what could they really do in this world while all these opportunities are abundant? They keep niggas like that out of corporate America because they know they're going to excel. They want that type of nigga knuckle dragging. They want that type of nigga doing some shit where he ain't got to use his mind. He just got to use his body. That John Henry shit. You see what I'm saying? Somebody have to take our people out of that John Henry shit. And it sure ain't going to be me. Them motherfucker stubborn in the bitch. Wow. I, man, I trip off the fact, man, that, that, that you know, you, you've, stayed, you've stayed down with the whole cause and the movement and what you were a part of. God put you in a situation where you, you was with the family, you know. Those detrimental last two, three years that you dealt with them, those were some times, those were some explosive times, bro. Like, what do you think, Pimp? Do you think Pimp would be happy with what you're doing right now with the brand and the way that you're, you're living your life when you, it comes to representing his name? I would think he would be pleased. Um, resources, I'm not willing to do some of the shit I used to do. So I probably could have shot past, you know what I'm saying, 100 yards uh, 10 times by now. But I've been so blessed that I basically want to move the way I'm moving. You know what I mean? I don't want to clip myself trying to, Risk it all to do this no more. I got I got bona fide ways that turn, so I want to keep that type of shit going. But what I've done with what I have is tremendous. Every day somebody hit me and be like, man, when I got out of jail, you did this for me. Man, you did this for me. So that's richness to me. You know what I mean? So I believe he would be pleased. Ugh. Straight business. You believe he'll be pleased. What's yeah. the thing you miss the most about the pimp? Chad Butler. Elaborate. Chad Butler was more of the, the, the loving person who was very considerate and compassionate about uh, people he knew, families, uh, old school artists he knew, kids who ran up on him, just individuals he bumped into. He just always wanted to do something for them. You know what I mean? Um, there's plenty of times we in the mall, um, I don't even get to tell him, hey, this dude might be an op because this is a nigga my brother shot, you know what I mean? And he buy himself some shoes and he buy me some shoes and he gifts the guy his shoes. Mm -hmm. Like we come straight out the store buying shoes and uh, I got my shoes and he got his and we see dude. But I'm looking at dude, he ain't looking like he want no shit. He really looking at me like, nah, man, it's good. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, it is what it is. So Pimp like, hey, man, what's up, man? You just got out. He's like, yeah, man, I just got out. And he was big as fuck, too. So he like, man, you, you, what you doing? Getting some shoes? He like, yeah, man. He handed him his shoes. And I think he went in his wallet and handed him some paper. You know what I'm saying? So he was always doing shit like that. Uh, when Pimp C was present, shit, you going to be a bitch. Hold up, ho. Say, bitch, who you talking to? <laughs> so so that brings up something else. So you saying Chad Butler and Pimp C I've heard that before. That, two that, 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 that there's character. That it, just, it's all kind of shit going on there. Sweet James Jones. Sweet James Jones. Uh, Macca Jordan. Yeah. And that's that's just a few that I know because what I love. Tony Snow. Tony Snow. You know what I love was Chad Butler. That's that's the dude. I was at the crib eating big barbecue with Ed barbecue and making ribs. Mama baking cakes. All the kids running around having a good time. And we there just chilling on some grown men shit, talking about how we going to provide for our families. That's the shit I was doing it for. Fuck all the fame, all the chains, and all this here trying to put on this persona. Nigga, we were bona fide hustling for that fucking legacy in them kids. Wow. I've had a few people on here, man, and uh, I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, these guys tell a story about uh, Master P. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard, I heard uh, OG Percy said the other day, "Ain't no nigga hit no Texas nigga. Ain't no who's that nigga hit no Texas nigga. You know how he go. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you and, know and how I, OG Percy is. But at the end of the day, um, we've heard this story over and over again. I also seen what GDP 
put it up to where where it was, you know, where uh, Master P talked a little bit about it. And I know it's old news on the mm-hmm. bridge. I love Master P. I love Pimp C. You know, I love the whole the whole movement of the South. Of course, I don't play about it. All of them coming with me, including Birdman. All of them, including you know anything you Luke. I can grab him from Florida. Yeah, you know? yeah, for Everybody. sure. Everybody, but for I'm sure. just saying. You know, like like that story when you hear it and you've heard it over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about it? And even J Dog was just on here and he right. said J Dog was on here and he was like, "Man, Pimp C told me one day out the blue, man, yeah, them nigga pistol whoop me." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So just give me your spiel on like when you when you heard about it, or when you think about it, what are the stories that came to you? The trillest shit I could tell you is this: I got it first from Mama. Wow. Then I got that's, it. That, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. Don't just say I got it first from What mama. did you get from mama? <laughs> yeah. well, explain it's that. It's just to a motherfucking interrogation. Because I ain't got to tell y'all <laughs> shit. I ain't about to. I'm no. about to tell you what I want to tell you. <laughs> Give me the information. Then nigga be getting behind these microphones. What? Yeah, I did it at 945. No, I was no, over there no. on 6th Street. It no. was, uh, mama. <laughs> man, all I can tell mama you West is this. Is gone. Mama told me. Uh, when he got out, he told me. And then I talked to... Uh, Bun manager, Red Boy, he told me. Same so, thing. So it's a very incredible, explosive story. But the lesson in this story is this. If you're going to pop that shit, be ready for the repercussions. Any street nigga know that. Wow. So the pistol whipping story is what you heard. I well. don't know. I wasn't there. How the fuck I pulled? I'm somewhere laid up with a funky ratchet ass hoe and pulled off the pole and broke trying to hustle them cracks. <laughs> but what did my you say mama told you? Told me what? <laughs> right. You say mama told me about the mouse. Mama told me plenty of shit. We used to hang together. <laughs> plenty of <years. laughs> So do you, when you think about it, do you feel like these stories keep coming up just because it's the way the internet moves? Because you heard the uh, the sex tape thing from Pippin Ken on here with Bobo and me. Mm-hmm. You know, that went crazy. Like it did. but it he, I'm going to tell you something about Ken. Mm-hmm. Ken never said who was what. He said, mm-hmm. I knew a story. What did he say? He said, I knew a story. He said, I I, I remember a, a story being told. No, he said he was there. He said, Pimp had a tape. Mm-hmm. He didn't say who was on the tape. He didn't. He didn't say, but people but started. I know who was on the tape. Wait a minute. <laughs> no. I know. No, but he didn't say who was on the tape or anything like that, but. When you hear these stories, you say you know. How would you know? How would I you know? You didn't stop. Yeah, like how? How would I not know so much shit that I do know? Why would I not? So you know who was on the tape? Yeah. Okay, so there was a tape. Yeah. But it wasn't pimp on the tape. That's what I heard, too. See, a lot of people hear what they want to hear. Like, I'm on the internet talking to people every day that's coming. Yeah, Pimp C had a sex tape with Beyonce. That's why Jay-Z knocked him out. Come on, man. You niggas are just patching and sewing shit together. You ain't even him what you think you him. Man, hey, man, these people special, man. These yeah. people special. Because some people will say, okay, if he wasn't on the sex tape, then why would he have the tape? Um, Industry shit happens. Why niggas wind up with other people chains? Why niggas always winding up with other people's property? Shit happens. You down with OPP? <laughs> Man, you other uh, people's property. I don't know. Sure. So when you so you've heard so many stories about, you know, pimp and everything. I want to go into the fact of I'm gonna push forward. Uh Boosie. Yeah. You when the first time you heard of Boosie? Uh way back in the day. Um he actually bought Boosie and Webby when they was teens uh, to Big Jack Barbershop. Big Jack being one of the uh, cats that was in the 4BM before they broke off to be UGK. You know what I'm saying? They had a little setup in the back of his barbershop. He was like a master barber in Port Arthur. So he bought uh, Boosie and Webby over there. He talked about it way back then, but I just wasn't back off in the rap yet like that. I was lost in the streets fucking off. So I been heard about him. And then when I saw him, you know what I mean? I didn't know what I was looking at. I don't think nobody knew those kids was going to become what they became. You know what I mean? But I've been around them cats a bunch of times. 
It took a while before Webby opened up and really chopped it up with me, but he did, you know what I mean? And then the times I've been around Boosie, uh, it was times when it, it was too crunk. We was at the club in some part of Louisiana, and he pulled up, you know what I'm saying, about 12 deep. Everybody got on T-shirts, looked like nightgowns and shit. <laughs> and it was back in the day. And we standing out there talking to D Solo from Street Flavor out of Houston. So he actually got that footage. And so Pimp introduces all woo woo woo, and I chop it up with Boosie briefly. See him again in Ace Town. Same get up. Them niggas tried to grab a chain off of bad ass and them. And bad ass and them. Bad, bad. And them got their motherfucking ass whoop around that whole man. You know what I'm really? talking about? Come on, man. That's all I'm saying. But then I met him again. Bun introduced me to him. Me, Gorilla Zoe, Boosie and shit. Then I met him again at the Lil Wayne show at the Cajun Dome. Me and Vicious opened up. And I, I chopped it up with him briefly, but he was gnawed. And at the time, I didn't know why. But at the time, him and him and Wayne had a little, you know what I mean? So it was always something going, going on when I was around him. But he always was cool with a nigga when I was around him. I asked you to, ask, to say this, like... That Boosie early on, the white me down and on back to when you talking about versus the Boosie that we deal with today, the Vlad interviewing Boosie, uh, the the Boosie who built out his estate and got his kids name, which is so dope. Uh, streets with his kids name and in, in, the, in the, you know around his house and he building his own neighborhood out. Um, what's the difference in those two Boosies? That the Boosie before he was uh, caught on a murder case mm -hmm. when they had him on death row. Uh, versus the Boosie we deal with today, who just actually uh, still dealing with a monitor on his leg right now. Right, right. Like, like, what's the difference in these Boosies? I think it's a beautiful combination of uh, maturity. Um, the type of life he's lived and the things he's seen, man, it's, it's about as closest to, to the end of your life you can get on death row. Mm. My, I should mention this, but my brother, you know what I'm saying, just went through fighting death or life, but we'll get back to it. Okay. So him coming out and now free, he's one of them dinosaurs because he was young enough, but he was always around the OG, so he soaked up all that game. Then he was with an independent label, so he soaked up all that game. Now he come back the OG of the young niggas. Like, he's living this, this combination of that young nigga OG shit at the same time, and he's maximizing it. We know what the business is when a nigga jump on that mic and say, fuck Charleston White or whomever, you know what I mean? So he perpetuating that motherfucking Al Jarreau on the major label, that's level, so that's why he's going on these Velaz, you know what I'm saying, doing this Orlando Brown type gangster shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's hard. It's I, a I, hell of a combination. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I like the way you broke that down. Yeah, yeah. What you say about what Boosie said about um, Dallas? He said Dallas is his he biggest just said platform. That. He ain't coming he said, back. No, this is 150K. He said Dallas is his biggest platform. This is where he get the most love and everything like that. But, but they shot said, him in Dallas. But because he got shot in Dallas, he said the only way he'll come back is if $150,000. That makes perfect sense. Because if somebody almost took your life in a place, most people wouldn't even return. Mm -hmm. But 150 racks will assure him he could put that security team in place the way he need to. He can cross his T's and dot his I's and come give the fans that still love him in Dallas a good show. Mm -hmm. If he come do this bitch half ass, somebody might finish the motherfucking mm -hmm. job. So 150, he already sat there and sketched that shit out where that shit going to be delegated at. That's but I feel like if somebody ass way to look that, at it. That, I thought about that, that that's what he'd want for the security, but... He came and performed in Tyler many times already since then. If somebody really was trying to get him, they'll drive down to Tyler, go get him if they wanted to. Yeah, they would, but what cake he bake in Tyler? Uh, it could be a fucking uh, three-story sheet cake baked in Dallas. This is home turf. Them nigga can whip up all kind of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So And just going down into East Texas like that ain't that easy the way you making it sound. Yeah. Right? They don't know these niggas down there. It's a bunch of niggas down there. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but niggas I don't every, know niggas shit, everywhere, man. man. Niggas. <laughs> man, but, but you know, when you think about just Boosie and his legend, the way that he has, man, he's massaged our ears with a good sound ever since he's been doing his thing, man. And, and you know, I Peter Pimp, but, but with Pimp, you know, saucing it up because Pimp had a lot to do with it. I think I was telling Bobo that the other day. Like, you know, Pimp was, was definitely uh, a big piece of that 
puzzle the way that whole thing came together. And to this day, I've been enjoying it, man. Shout out to Boosie Boo. Straight you know? up. And Webby. And Webby. Webby, yeah. Webby, man. That nigga there, man. He true to it, too. And loyal as they come, man. He love pimp, man. Man, when I went to um, Jackson, Mississippi, and I was able to witness a, a very intimate Boosie show. He was about to get locked up. And the show was something I never seen before because it was packed as hell wall to wall. But it was all these people that was in unison that was directly connected to his energy. And everything he was telling them, they was hanging on to every word. He like, man, my diabetes has been fucking with me. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, why would he play the rap show talk about that? But then everybody like, oh, man, like everybody. This is his family. His fans, see, his fans are different. His family is his motherfucking family. family. Mm -hmm. Then he like, man, I might be going through this time. And he like, something about somebody. Then he started crying and shit. Everybody in the goddamn crowd was damn near crying. I'm like, where the fuck am I? You know what <laughs> wow. I mean? So I understood, like, man, this this boosie shit, this is some different shit. Wow. It was somebody got mad at me about the a boosie Jay Z comparison. I don't I can't remember who it was. Oh, I know I remember who it was now. Yeah, because I, I basically I wasn't saying that Boosie was but Boosie to uh, I like to us, I, I mean I'm I I don't I'm not from the East Coast. Bro. Right. So when I relate, I relate to niggas that talk in the South, okay? I ain't I gonna, you. Like if you put somebody, I'm be like, that nigga talking that talk. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah. I know, you know, you might have ate, you might have had to, you know, eat, you know, uh, Roman noodle. They do that up there. But down here, we might have had to go to the well to get some water. Right. We It just might be a different way we did it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not saying there's no, no takeaway from nobody else, because I love them too up there. They, they look like us. But when you hear the sounds of what Boosie do, and, and, and the way his music come across and the way his, it's therapy for, for people who've been locked up. That's people who've been, you know what I'm saying? Who've been locked up in the in, in the South and who've been through this stuff, man. If you ain't been through it, you ain't gonna be able to understand to where it, I'm yeah. coming from. You know what I'm saying? But what he does and what, and even like Webby holding him down when he was gone the best he could. Right. People don't realize that. That was heavy. I love seeing Webby out there giving it a row. And when Booster come in, on, man. Booster say, man, you know that nigga don't supposed to be in there talking, man. Y'all ain't got Booster Webby out here talking and doing, doing interviews, man. He was getting it in the best he could. Best he could, man. And he, and he always been, you know what I'm saying, a good dude when I was around. Like, he, he led a lot of people around him. That's one of the things that I watched. I was like, damn, I wish I was closer to them because I would suggest, man, watch this perimeter. There's, there's too many... <laughs> Just, hey, I'm around type dudes, like anybody and everybody, but that's his energy. Uh, just with Pimp, then we didn't move like that. We moved totally different, but at the same time, that's their, that's their camp. I respect it. If that's how they move, that's how they move. But we just didn't move like that. So when I used to hang with them, I'd be like, damn, man, the perimeter is being broken by just so many people who could just walk up and blend in. I want, I want to ask you about the Trill Burgers. We went down there and hung out with Bun, ate that Trill Burger, and you yeah. say you ate one. Um, just... How big is that? And I think he said they sold a bunch of damn burgers this month. I just seen a, a, a thing come out of how many burgers they sold. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a, a crazy number, to be right, honest right. with you. But but I know the first month they say he made a million dollars. You know, like, yeah. what, um, how do you feel about what Bun is accomplishing in Trill Burgers? And just how, how was your feeling when you went to Trill Burger? He treated us very well. It was one thing I felt kind of weird about, but... You know, that's maybe me asking too much. But at the same time, he treated us really well. Um, the food was good. And what I would hope is that he could expand that thing to anywhere and everywhere in Texas and wherever it would be welcome. His success, it only opens doors for more trio niggas. So I want my nigga to go as high as, you know what I'm saying, the universe and the, and the God is going to take him. Um, and, and that's what's up. I just... My legend, I just be wanting some time for people to implement it in the places that it fit. You know what I mean? Like, they play a lot of Southern music and shit. Uh, niggas got to tell me, hey, man, that shit you got ain't jamming. And it can't be true because the fans already said it have. And then the most majors nigga in life who I wanted to display my talent to was Pimp and Bun. Mm -hmm. So when Pimp told me, oh, yeah, nigga, this, this what's up. You just be having some shitty ass beats. Nobody can ever tell me different. But it's like my contribution, um, anything I do is like, it's, it's swept to the side. Like, man, most niggas had labels and, and backers and, you know what I'm saying, money from, you know, whomever 
to propel them to be visible. I missed the boat with the distributors when everybody was getting out there going to all the small towns. I came in just a little late. And it's my own fault because I stopped rapping for like seven years, lost in the streets on some bullshit. But I love my music. I got a, I got a loyal fan base fucking with it. It's just sometimes some people I feel should line it up where it go. You know what I mean? So you're telling me like the the ESGs, um, the other OG artists and shit, you're telling me He's a Leo Records can't be in that playlist when curators on Spotify and all these other places, all these other playlists, throws it in there without anybody telling them? Why does it belong amongst that with strangers? You know what I mean? Mm. So I just wish some niggas would give me my motherfucking card, place me where I belong, or hey, don't. I'll do it my goddamn self. That's what I was to say. You you definitely can do it yourself in, in these days and time. Do you, right. And you're doing that. Quit trying to hide a 6'3", nigga, 300 and some pound. Goddamn. <laughs> I want you to tell I'm me. I'm a lump in the rug. I want you to tell me about uh, uh, also, um, what you think about Keefe D, man, getting locked up uh, after 30 years, you know, 27 years or whatever. I think it's about 27 years, 26 years, 27. Um, going on, uh, Vlad. Vlad say he's a, a investigative journalist. This is the first time that he says that his video will be used in the court of law to convict someone. Um, what do you think about that? And do you feel like this is the first time? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think it's the first time. I just think that bona fide street niggas should not get enticed by these motherfucking cameras and these microphones. The conversations I have when I talk about crazy shit, it's more just physical little boy shit, fights and shit like that that happened 25, 30 years ago. You're talking about shit that ain't got no statute of limitations, and you're sitting your big gangster ass in front of these cameras behind these microphones too comfortable incriminating yourself. I've been in entertainment so goddamn long I'm damn near knowing what I'm talking about every time I come in here, how I'm approaching. A gangster street nigga ain't got that type of meticulous type thought. He's a street nigga. He got thoughts of the street shit he's done. I'm not a street nigga. I was a lost kid that made some choices that wind up doing some street shit and learn how to do some gangster shit. But at the end of the day, I'm just a nigga out of PA that's a grown man that take care of his business. But these are bona fide street niggas a part of historical moments. Tupac, there'll never be another. And you comfortable talking about this shit? Yeah, man, because I was doing right this. In the and book I was about doing it. It. Right in the book. We wrote a whole book about it. Man, you better talk about some shit that don't make no sense. <laughs> he wrote a whole book. He wrote a book, and he went and talked about it on several platforms, um, like like Boss Talk. He went on there, and he just told him his story. Uh, that night, he was in the car. Some people say he was driving. He said he was driving. You know, it's, it's wild stuff going on with that. Allegedly, he was the drive. His nephew was at busting out the window. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, Nigga, do you know... <laughs> Do you know how many of them stories I might have? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Nigga, I'm from Boulder Hawk to Texas. Cadillacs over Lexus. It is what it is, and it's going to be what it's going to be, and it's going to do what the fuck it's going to do. You know what I'm talking about? 50,000 population. Niggas on top of niggas. Niggas is colliding and clashing like a motherfucker. But you think I'm going to get on some raps and go to talking about that? Man, all the street shit I did didn't even land in my raps. Because a nigga told me when I went to Houston, he told me a detrimental story about a nigga that was performing. They got popped on stage. Damn. And you know why? Because when you cross that line talking about you're an artist, your whereabouts are promoted. Mm -hmm. Live on stage, Saturday, 10 p.m., be there, be square, bring your pistol. You know what I mean? And you on stage, you're there, you gonna be there. So if your op want to get you, goddamn, he got all the opportunity to do it. He can get you on your way in, on your way out, or he can get your ass on stage. And wow. so when a nigga told me that when I was getting back into my music, then another nigga told me some other shit. I'm like, in you window. So all my raps, I be saying some crazy ass shit. But at the same time, I'm not implementing a nigga who ain't got no voice. I got plenty of niggas that we've agreed as men, hey, we're going to let that shit die. But what if I get on raps and go to, yeah, nigga, remember I bust you in your motherfucking head, fuck <laughs> your bitch, yeah, nigga. And I say, uh. 100,000, 250,000 copies. This nigga that got this memory multiplied over and over and over in his head. He going to the store to try to forget about it. Nigga pass by, blaring it out the car. His homeboys, all oh, that nigga say he fucked your bitch. You know he talking about you. That nigga going to feel some type of way. That's real. That's so real. Um, so 
I think I hit you with this question. Come on, man. Zero gonna ride blue and I'm gonna ride red. Yeah. That's what Pimp said. Yeah. Um, red. Mm-hmm. Is, were there any gangs, any gang affiliates, anything to do with gangs in the Port Arthur area? Did he just like red? I'm just going by his verse. He um, said, Zero gonna ride blue. blue and and Zero, we know, you know, you hear stories of him allegedly being a part of the Hoovers or, uh, uh, is what was the deal? Did did Port Arthur have any people down there that believe you know that that rode with the the gang, the blue red blood crypt thing? Most definitely, I would have to say that arrived. You know, what I'm saying early early ninety. You know what I mean? Um, Pimp wasn't affiliated with any of that. He just. You got to dig it. He's an entertainer, so he know the game. He know what's going to spark the interest. Red turn heads. Yeah, you said all the time. Yeah, so he he was so many steps ahead of the average person because he was an artist. He's a creator, you know what I mean? He plays instruments, you know what I mean? So he spent a lot of time cultivating and taking care of his business to become who he wanted to be artist-wise. Now, that street shit, yeah, it's, it's bloods and crips and PA. It is. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of them. <laughs> Out of them fifty thousand, you got about what percentage is, is Bloods and Crips? Oh shit, it's 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 a small percentage because that fifty thousand also is talking about you know what I'm saying everybody in that area, but it's a major part because that's the shit that's gonna make the paper all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I know the canvas of Port Arthur that people lock their doors about. You know what I mean? People buy a double barrel shot. Why is this, where is this accent coming from? Hey, you know, man, I got all the time. <laughs> you heard it. Hey, man, I'm also in a movie country, coming out, man. Did he? Yeah, I got a movie. I'm in a movie coming out, man. Shout out to Doobie D. He just dropped a movie. I do yeah, a little cameo did. in it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, nigga tricked me to come get in the movie. Talking about I'm big. How was, the movie. was, I was that? I was a goddamn movie. We didn't get extra in that motherfucker. <laughs> you the extra. That nigga had me be an extra in that motherfucker. Hey, that nigga hurt my feelings. Nigga, I don't come outside unless it's real business. You know what I mean? Nice. But that my little nigga, man. He doing some major shit. And uh, yeah, yeah, his movie coming out soon. And shout out to my niggas yeah. in East Texas. Now, in that movie, I got a hell of a role. It's called Parole Money 3. Yeah, and, I heard about that one. Yeah, and I'm also like on the soundtrack of this. So it's like, strategic ways of getting that music out now i'm trying mm -hmm. to land that shit on movies and if you notice i use it in all my youtube videos and shit like that so we get it out there the best way we can but yeah the characteristics and the personality and the charisma is always who i've always been but growing up in certain environments you know what i mean you're not comfortable being yourself but i've reached this 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 pinnacle in life not a pinnacle but i've reached a point in life well i'm myself i'm back myself yeah, because wow. Pinnacle is the top. Yeah, I ain't, like, you ain't got you ain't nah, got nah, no. That's why I corrected that shit. Well, well, he's a man. Like I said, man, I always enjoy having you on the show, man. I hope we did you justice like Boss Talk 101. I always try to do. You've been coming man. here. You was here before everybody. I don't know if you realize that as far as the Pimp C stories, you were, one, you were the first one, to, you and KLC. But you, you, you know, that was the early on. And people don't realize, like I said, I always tell the story about how God put you in my life. I met you in the parking lot. This store been here 17 years. Come on. You introduced me to Steve B. Lowe. I heard Bun talk about it. You was the one that basically I called you and said, man, I need Steve B. Lowe. You went and found him for me. After that, Steve B. Lowe calls me back after he come on the show say, hey, man, Bobo, you need to interview Bobo. Bobo right. want to come on the show. And I said, okay, well, shit, Bobo can come on show. I don't care what, I, who the hell is Bobo is what I said. <laughs> Let's be real. That's what I said. And damn he was it, like, man. Bobo, you know, lost his baby. And I, I said, damn, yeah, show, yeah. he here? He's like, yeah, man. I'm like, get that nigga to me. And that's how this whole thing rolled out. That was Bobo's first interview. Uh, you Like I said, you was first. Then came Steve B. Low, Then yeah. came Bobo. And then after that, you know, we where we at today, me and you even celebrated Pimp together. Come on, you man. know, it's like on his birthday, me and we you did. playing stuff like that. And uh, people don't realize we take this so, you know, so serious about it trying is. to make sure we keep the name alive. Then Bun appreciated us. Bun B said he watches us. He watches yeah, he, the show. He, he be busy, but when he got time and he checks some shit out and it ain't cockamamie. He gonna fuck with it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes I lose people in the sauce because I'm all over the place, but it's my own method to do what I did. And I can't really reveal it. I just have to keep 
working the way I work. You know yeah. what I mean? Because what works for you may not work for me. Well, I, I just like the way that you hold true to who you are. You know, right. and you and you definitely mention God. And you know what I got mean? Got to, got the, to. The, the, the thing is, man, we getting older, man. I just like I said, I just Come lost on. a homeboy, and and like I told Bun, we're not gonna be here forever. No. You know, and 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 to be here now. Is is so is is live, man. Because look at all the people that are not here. When you start going down that road, you start going running into not just pimp, but look at all of these different rappers, all of these different family members, all these different uncles and aunties and brothers and disappearing. sisters disappearing, and we still here. Yeah. That's a reason to believe, man. That's a reason to put God first. And when I hear you mention God, I have a breath of fresh air because we owe the guys, man. So yeah. I think that's so live and your kids get to hear you, you know, that you ain't too caught up in yourself to understand that God is real. And that's, never be. I was, that's real. It's always just going through too much real shit. And let me say this. Uh, before my mom passed, my brother was on death row. Wow. Um, he did about eight, nine years in that thing. And they were going to go ahead and take him out. But it was some white folks that fought for him. I'm talking about two for nail. And, and just recently, they brought him back to court and, and re-sentenced him. Because he was on a capital murder, it was only two options. But they was happy that they was able to get him off the death. And he got life without the possibility of parole. And he's happy about it. Wow. So it gives me a bittersweet type feeling like I still have my brother but not in a physical form. And my mom said before she died, I don't want them folks to kill my baby. Wow. I hope they don't kill my baby. I pray to God they don't kill my baby. So mama, they're not going to kill your baby. That's hard. That's hard. That's big. That, now that's right. That right there is something to celebrate. See, see people be caught up in they self and don't understand, man, this here is heavy. Like people think they got problem. When you start looking at somebody else's problem, man, you'll start to find out yours ain't just as bad as you think it is. You know what I'm saying? So man, thank you so much, man. Let me, let me see these hats, man. And the, you brought me some, didn't you? Oh yeah. 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 Man, let them, uh, man, check let's them see what we got, got going here, man. Y'all brought pimp. me something, man. Y'all brought me something over here, man. Young Heezy, what's up, baby? I told hey, on what, you, boy. What, 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 what's going on? <laughs> I ain't asked for no shirts. What is, oh, these mine? Man, I'm blessing your game. Come on. Oh, man, yeah. man, I got me. A, you know I'm gonna wear this shirt. Stop yeah, playing. Yeah. What, what size thing. you wear? Man, I bought. He a large. I'm gonna wear a large. Who need a large? He a large. What about you? Medium. Uh, medium or large depends on how it runs. See how considerate I am, man. You brought all the right sizes. Come man. on, man. Check it out. Now, I ain't bringing you niggas two a piece now. No, no let's check it out. Options. Check it out. I bought you some options, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I got you uh, a bunch of hats here, man, and uh. Man. Hope you and John, that's what it's all about, man. Trillgear.biz, man. Yeah. And also follow me on YouTube. I'm going to finesse this mic while they mesmerized oh, by the kids. Yeah, take out one of your hats. Yeah, take out. Okay, yeah, I'll help you out. Get that black hat out of there. Let me see what yeah, we got yeah, there, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 this the official. Like you say, the official Miss Jamaica. Hey. I always wanted to ask you, what you be saying, Wagwan? What that mean? Just like what you what's just said, going on? what's going on? Wagwan, yes, Wagwan. I'm gonna start saying and that. You hit it too. Oh, there you go. Look at this right Wag here, Wag. man. These are them trio hats, man. Of course, Wag you see Wag. the legendary yeah. Pimp C on and the you side of good too. These hats will. Yeah, he been watching Boss Talk. He watches this, man. I do. He support us. This is the no. He wanna. Me. I really, really no support me. It's a lot of niggas I hear say it, but I know this nigga got my back, and that's why I rock with him. I don't play by him at all. Niggas Hollywood. I call this nigga <laughs> when I'm in L.A. I remember, hey, I've been calling you. I've been doing that a long time, man. Yeah, we be, <laughs> we be spit boxing and lip rattling on the phone. Let me ask shit. you a question on them hats, because you do all the flat beds. You ever thought about doing a... They can bend them, you know that. Like yeah, the so. dad-looking hats? Yeah, no, like these, that. like these. Basically. That's the dad. Look oh, is that there. what you call it? Yeah, yeah, that's what people call. Uh, I just haven't found my uh, my audience for that yet. Yeah, okay. um, but you know, I can take. I it call it a baseball. I can, cap, you know, they wear these uh -huh. and bend them. They can mm -hmm. make this the same way. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. Uh, my manufacturer, I just have to. Tell no, you. no, I'm talking about like if you wanted, if somebody wanted an individual one done like that, mm -hmm. you can get it done. Lids was telling us the other yeah. day that they do them like right. that. You know what I mean? And sell them just like that, right there. Yeah, They'll yeah. take one just like this and mm -hmm. do it for the customer. 
Right. I think it costs like five or six bucks more, but been your own damn hat. Mode. <laughs> no, they they wet it. They do it on the machine. Oh, they make that, that whole. They make that whole right. Yeah, it's yeah. cardboard. I seen what they do uh, on the machine, man. They be steaming them bitches and beating the shit out of them. Mm-hmm. Man. My manufacturer send me videos. Let me know how. Man, it's thank you so much, man. Like I said, man, thank you for these gifts, man. Thank man. y'all, man. Open that, open that medium shirt. We're gonna Keep take the medium and the large. Incredible job. Yeah, I already got a medium know, and large over here. Okay. okay Give okay, it cool. exposure. This is what he Give has on right there. Okay. Okay. Man, it's going down, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. He's a man. We love you, bro. You boss talk 101 forever in a day. Nigga, that's a long time when you say forever in a day. That's beautiful. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Tell y'all.